Hey friends, thanks for joining me. I have here my next project. It should be a Rotel displayer. <clears throat> Let's open it up and see what we've got here. It was supposedly untested. Oh, that's my laundry upstairs, if you can hear that. Um, so, supposedly untested. I am not like, uh, believing that usually that means it doesn't work um but you never know right somebody could legitimately have uh not known how to test it and not had the equipment or i just can't imagine that though all right uh-oh i hear parts inside all right so something's loose in there so we'll need to open it up before we kick it on. Figure out what that is just so we don't accidentally. These stay, they wrap stuff like I do. And I love this foam, or not foam, but this uh, shrink wrap. Oh my goodness, it's like a godsend. Uh, saves stuff from getting beat up. Sorry, I know you can't see me opening this here, but Let's move this amp up and out of the way here. So this is from the 90s, I believe. There's probably a date on it. Made by Rotel in China. Ro Rotel doesn't make their stuff in China, I guess. I didn't know that. All right, let's see here. We still have that. Yeah, there's still something loose. Let's get this off. <clears throat> I'm excited. I'm hoping that this really does just kick right on and go to town. But with loose parts inside, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> we'll see though. Some of the times when I get these in, so sometimes I buy them on Facebook Marketplace, sometimes I buy them on eBay, but um, half of the time somebody has just overlooked like a setting or something. Um, there we go. Okay, so. It was a little piece of plastic that looks like it's off of the disc tray, honestly. Holy moly, that was some drama. Okay. My guess is this tray is busted up. These look like tray pieces. Power to it. It's an incredibly short power cord. Well, no luck. All right, so we're gonna go into a repair. Oh, maybe not. There she goes. She had to think about it. Oh, so there's no disc. Alrighty, time for surgery. Although, I really wanted this thing to just work right out of the box. Just get lucky, you know? But, uh, like I said before, untested usually means not working. Alright, so, I am going through and looking for disconnected wiring. I'm going to check the belts. I'm cleaning the lens. I'm going to lube the rail. And then... Uh, here I got distracted. I'm looking for where the plastic pieces went, and they ultimately they did not go to the tray. Obviously, the tray was working, so it's just little backer pieces. Uh, so, on to the laser. I'm going to show you how to actually check the laser here. All right, continuing to troubleshoot here. I wanted to show how to test the laser. 
not really test test the laser, but just to make sure it's still functional. So what you'll do is you'll hold your phone over the laser itself. You can see it right there almost in the center of the phone. And then you'll open it up, let's see here, and then close it. And what you'll see is you see the light? There you go. That's how you test the dude to make sure that your laser isn't shot. So the laser's not shot on this one. My guess is uh, the adjustments, the finer adjustments in the laser are probably shot. Not shot, but they need moved. They are on the bottom side. And I'll show you here. All right, here's the potentiometers for the laser. I took it off and moved them a little bit. <clears throat> Let's see if that improves things. Uh, I gotta put it back together here. Dun, 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 dun. Still not seeing the disc. Darn it. All right, I found a guy who has, well, actually, it's Liberty, Ele Liberty Electronics, and they do have a storefront, like a physical storefront, but um, yeah, not anywhere around here. I'm just going to go ahead and buy one of these, and hopefully, it comes in already adjusted. It has been a few days, actually more like a week. I think it's been exactly a week since I started filming this, since I started working on this. I put it back on the shelf while I was waiting on the part to ship in. Now, while I was playing around with it, after stopping the recording, I actually did get it to work. Uh, the potentiometers on the back, I just kept taking it apart, readjusting them and so on. I finally actually got it to work. So she's up and running. So we know for sure it works, which is awesome sauce. Love that. Let me get it, get it going here so you can hear a song. All right, well that's awesome and all, but it chatters really bad, which is a symptom of an adjustment that still needs made. Without being able to hook it up to the scopes and everything else, I don't really know, or actually finding the schematics to find the, the actual, uh, where the potentiometer should be and then figuring out where to place the, the, um, uh, the taps. You know, it's just just huge pain in the butt. So I'm hoping that this one comes already ready to go so it won't chatter as bad. And I think the sound quality is a little bit low. Um, and that's just due to, to the adjustments, right? If the laser is not focused just right or it doesn't have just enough power or it has too much power, it's going to bring back, uh, well, bad sound. That's just what it boils down to. All right, I'm going to go into fast forward mode, take this all back apart on this new piece what uh, you have to do uh, before you install one is uh, there are anti-static uh, solders so it's not as easy as just taking the old one out putting the new one in uh, you actually have to do a little bit of soldering and to do that we're going to use a little bit of uh, wick and if you go back to my other video where i'm rebuilding the uh, crossovers in my uh, Pioneer uh, CS88As. Um, have kind of a rundown of, of soldering there. But if you want to know more about soldering, there's plenty of videos out there. All right, I'm going to try and bring you in a little bit closer here. So this little piece right here, there was a blob of solder over both those joints, which should have been there, should be there. It's there for uh, anti-static, and I think I already said that. 
during shipping. They don't want to lose it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the posts. So this little this little boobop here. I'll figure out where to put my hands around the camera here. This little boobop here comes out, so it moves. What we're going to do is we're going to pop this one out. It should just relatively easily pop away. It does have a little bit of friction against it because the cording is in there. All right, let's make sure I've got this set right. Come on, buddy. There. And there. We don't have to worry about this one as much because it's the one we're removing. Okay, so it's loose. Now what we have to do is take off the upper bracket. And the top just slides right off like so. Set it to the side. Now we have this first guide comes off. And the second guide is a little bit trickier. You have to kind of weasel it out of there. And whoop. And there's a little spring under here. So when you release it, that spring's gonna wanna kinda jump out of there. All right, so that's the old one out. The new one goes in. You gotta make sure to get that spring seated. All right, the new guide, or the, not the new guide, but the guide in. Bingo. All right, then you slide it like so. All right. And then you put this guide in. I have to raise this just a tad. There. And it all kind of slides into place. Bingo. And then put this guy down. Deep sigh. Deep sigh. Did you hear that deep sigh? That's it. That's a, gosh, I hope this works. Although I do have it working, so not really a big deal if it doesn't, right? It's just kind of a noisy, noisy player. A little bit of clackety clack going on. Okay, nothing needs to be torqued down too awfully much. Now that we have this in there, we wanna make sure that that is open. I'm gonna set this in there and it doesn't need pushed or anything it will just tension will hold it in all right there we go and it is done we'll put the tray on top which goes the other way there we go come on now the loose pieces now that i'm zoomed in actually so when i opened this up it was kind of had some loose pieces in it. It's just little plastic pieces and they really don't serve much of a function. Um, basically what that tells me is this thing at some point has taken one heck of a one heck of a blow and I'll put money on that's why we have a maladjusted uh, CD uh, pickup. All right, put the screws in to hold this down. They're just itty bitty little Screws, they're not really doing too much. There's no real, uh, I don't know, outside of holding it in place, they're not really doing much. All right, now what we'll do is power it up. Actually, we do have power, yay. Let's figure out where our, there we go. goes oh yeah that's much quieter perfect all right 
let's turn it on and see if we get some sound. Oh yeah, that's much better. Perfect. Oh, that sounds so much better and it's quieter. Wonderful. Cool. So overall, let's see here. I spent, I think, $80 on this unit as a parts repair, um, 60 to buy it, 20 to ship it. And then I paid, I think, $40 for this. No, 30 something, 32 bucks for this and $9 to ship it in. So all in, what am I at $120? And one of these working, a good one working, is about $300. So, good deal. Awesome sauce. Like and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, off to the next adventure.